I can still be valid because it's Tuesday. And it's time for Up the Press. Chris Kendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us. But from Lagos this morning. Hello, Chris. Good morning and glad to have you join us again. Thank you very much. And nice to hear. Okay, so let's go straight and uh, start with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with Presidential poll petitions, military, police warn protesters as tribunal delivers verdict Wednesday. The riders there, military, police vow to prevent violence, tribunal proceedings for live telecast, court orders workers to stay away, PDP, LP confident, APC promises to be obey ruling. That's the big story this morning, at least one of it, this one and labor. So let's start with this. Yes, um, the, the presidential tribunal will finally give uh, verdict and judgment tomorrow. And they're good enough. The tribunal has uh, said that uh, the judgment will be televised live. And every TV station that is interested is free to um, transmit it live. I think that's the first time we have that since 1999. That's a um, But it's good that um, this is coming because. The tribunal uh, or court, as it were, has a mandate. As a number of days, uh, it has been stipulated to be able to deliver a judgment. So they're trying to meet that particular uh, constitutional uh, provision. And um, so we're going to see what is going to happen to us. Um, the, uh, the statement by the DSS, uh, by the military, by the police, and um, me is neither here nor there. Said they are foreseen any any other uh, thing that some of us have not seen. I don't see it. It's quite important. <laughs> well, first okay. of all, but, yeah, first of all, people had thought it may take the end of this month for us to hear the judgment, but here we're going to be hearing it tomorrow. Uh, and then the live telecast, I think this took many by surprise since they refused to um, broadcast the whole proceedings from the beginning. Were you surprised when you heard that it's going to be broadcast live on Wednesday? No, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised because uh, probably the tribunal wants to make it as transparent as possible and probably to pay attention as well. So everybody across the globe, not just in India, to have uh, us uh, inside of uh, but it's like if we are not a, a lawyer, then at least those of us that can still, those that can still be simply to understand um, so, um, and it's not going to be hearsay. You know, the Nigeria oh, yes. side. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. See what they thought. They don't say ah. this one. They don't say so. Uh, you know, the and nation come, is going the to be point, almost. The yeah, the nation is going to be almost friends, at a standstill tomorrow. Oh, that nice. be, uh, there's going to be various version of it yeah, from word of mouth. From so, it's better than the, I think. It's, uh, the the court is just trying to uh, put some level of transparency into it. Uh, Okay. In, 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 in that judgment, and so that is what it is. Uh, a request was made initially uh, for the trial to be televised live by the tribunal and or court, as it were, because we don't say that it's not particularly room for that. So, but uh, this is coming. So, and don't forget uh, tomorrow, Monday, is also practically a public holiday to, to, to some the large extent because the two week, uh, two days uh, national strike. By the NLC continue tomorrow. So a lot of people will stick their tomorrow. Matter of fact, is some of the let, let's take the other headlines here on the punch. Above the mass said you have subsidy pains, labor vows to grand economy, begin strike, the rider, maritime bank vendors, um, CSOs plan rally, and then uh, FG begs NLC to shelve strike. You have rep summon six MDAs over FG asset sale. You also have down beneath the main headline, the beautiful picture of the light rail, which is beginning operations in Lagos State. And it leads with 40 years after Buhari's suspension, Lagos light rail begins operation. And then you have uh, foreign yeah. investors repatriated Five billion dollars dividend CBN. Okay, so let's go on, Chris. Yes, as I, uh, I was saying, um, the strike begins today, and um, the difference between what is um, going on today and tomorrow 
um, is the fact that this is a warning strike, so it's for two days. It is different from an indefinite strike. An indefinite strike is a strike you don't know when it ends. So this one is time bound, as we say in law. So it's for um, Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, all the associations that affiliates of the NLC and the TUC have mobilized themselves to strike. One is striking. But TUC, TUC is not joining them. TUC has pulled out. No, oh, good. If TUC have pulled out, then it is NLC. But you also have to realize that um, uh, some affiliates, uh, the, the, some other affiliates like the banks are joining, are, are joining the strike. So if the banks are joining the, or the other, they are joining. So, but it's, it's still what it is. Uh, but the fact remains that it's a warning strike, and this is done to comment. Don't forget that this strike, uh, there's been this notice of strike since the removal of subsidy. I think this is the third one, the third warning. Um, the first time it was supposed to be a strike, then the industrial court stopped that. The second one that was supposed to be a strike, they decided to call it a protest. They had a protest, I think, a protest, uh, in order to not to uh, contravene uh, the, the ruling of the court. I stopped them, but now it's a warning strike. And the federal government tried to um, call the labor leaders to uh, a meeting through the new uh, Minister of Labor, Lalong. It seems that the Labor has made up its mind. So I hope that within these two days, after the strike, the government, federal government will be able to meet Labor and be able to iron out the various issues at stake so that we, can, we will not be able to say an indefinite strike. But this is a strike that a lot, I personally just don't, didn't think that NLC would pull it because a lot of people have, been, have practically lost faith in the LC, uh, uh, NLC and its ability to beat. Uh, the labor movement to be able to challenge the government's uh, insistent increase in trade price and other um, economic policies. But let's see this, this high, high it goes. So today, tomorrow, um, there's going to be sit at home by certain unions. But it can be rest assured that some other economic activities continue. Definitely, the markets will open the rest of that. And some other Nigerians that are there who are into private business also. Of that's, course, that Ia, Ia Basira and the uh, Mame Maker will not allow anything to stop them from opening their shops. Yeah, Ia Basira, I'm telling you, Mala, my house will definitely open her canteen. Uh-huh. Well, there are those who actually believe that labor lost the opportunity to seize the moment when they should have uh, at the very beginning. And one is beginning to wonder the impact this one in strike would have, if any. That is just the that's the right uh, statement you made there. Uh, this, uh, they failed to seize the opportunity because if they had, probably would not have had the second increase in the fair price. That would have stopped with that first first uh, 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 price increase. Yes, that was withdrawal of um, subsidy as announced by the federal government by the president on at his inauguration on the 29th. And we also knew that that um, withdrawal was supposed to take effect at the end of June, uh, of June. But with the announcement of the president, then it took effect from May. And so Labour could have come in and said, no, this has been, yes, this has been documented and this is supposed to start at the end of June. So you cannot subject Nigerians. Subsidies have been paid on the petroleum product till June, not May. And that is where I thought that I would have started. And they would have insisted on that. And I believe that government would have given to allow the subsidy to run to June. Then, within that period, the negotiation would have come up on the proper uh, pricing. Definitely, definitely not minding the fact that subsidy are removed. But they, they lost the opportunity. And that was the first increase. They probably were deceived and they fell into the trap of the federal government. And before you knew, within one, some, uh, some days or weeks, there was another increase. So, the, the, the government caught them on a way as people were not proactive. So, but let's look what the level of impact is going to, um, what is going to be the impact of this. Because don't forget that there is a committee that was set up by the federal government headed by the chief of staff to the president. Mm. And that is where the problem is. And that committee has not been met. And if that committee is not met, then what, what are we talking about? The mm. government are talking about rolling out of palettes, giving five billion to each state, releasing of grains and the rest of them. How has that been able to impact on the life of Nigerians? Those are the issues, and I, I think that the Labour should be talking about that. Yeah, and, and the Minister of um, Labour, um, 
you know, Simon Lalong called for calm and patience from labor, saying that they need time to, um, to, to sort things out. I, I, of course, another school of thought is also saying that labor should calm down uh, because the federal government is already bringing out these palliatives. Yes, they are not satisfied with the way it's going, but they should calm down and let them walk it through. If you calm down, Nigeria, once you calm down, you lose everything. Mm. You shouldn't calm down. They should put the government close. When you say calm down, the government goes back to, um, to their strategic ways of painting. The labor minister said, oh, they should give me some time that is just coming into office. And that's, is it not a Nigerian? Just coming to office doesn't make any sense. He is Nigerian. He has part of this. He knows what has happened since 29th of, um, of May. May. Mm -hmm. when the president inaugurated. So he should hit the ground run. So he shouldn't have waited for the strike notice. Um, for let, Then let's move before the issue of the um, real uh, the ruin that was um, inaugurated yesterday. Yes, after about 40 years, uh, we now have a, a, a blue line rail um, in Lagos um, that's going to fly between Marina and the uh, Maitre. That's a good one. That's also going to be the red line. And uh, I think that's the way to go. This is what we ought to have done over 40 years. That the government of uh, former uh, military leader, uh, Muhammad Buhari, scuttled that uh, attempt by Jack on the government after the toppling in 93. Um, that was supposed to be a... By now, Nigeria, would, um, Lagos would have been totally covered by this real rebelt. That was um, not to be. Mm. But good enough yesterday, Governor... Um, so Wolu was able to flag up that, and that to me is going to be a lot of stuff. Okay. By the time Lagos is totally connected by rail, that would be a very, very big solution to the problem of transportation in Lagos. And let me also use this opportunity to warn those of uh, those negotiations that are with that. It's your, you know, the negotiations have been won. Don't try to cross that rail. This is not like Agege rail or Ikomu rail. Don't try to cross that rail because the place is wired. Proceed to be attributed. So let them stay off that. Uh, so, but congratulations to Lagos State Government. And yes. I hope that other state Indeed, they, congratulations they, to Lagos State. Uh, Governor Samuel Lu has also assured that the, late, the, the red uh, rail will also come on board before the end of this year. So more good is in store for negotiations there. So let's move forward to the next newspaper, the leadership. And the leadership is leading with hardship. Labor shuns FG begins warning strike over delayed palliatives. That is the lead story. We've talked about that. Um, presidential polls, anxiety ahead of tribunal judgment to, tomorrow. That's, uh, and then above the masthead, you have why Nigeria's refineries will never work. That's Obasanjo. And then just beside it, you have blame Buhari for current economic crisis, not Tinubu. And that's coming from Sanusi. Let's talk about these two, Chris. First of all, former President Olusegun Obasanjo is speaking again. Um, Nigeria's refinery will never work. He's given the reasons why. Yes, he gave reasons, and part of it is corruption, mm. which is far. I do not totally believe that um, the, the refineries will not work. It will work. If you have the self will and the price will work. It will work. How, why is it working in other countries, and why won't it work in Nigeria? Is that other countries that are having their refineries they have two pairs or they are from the moon? They're not from the moon. I come to realize that almost some of the people that work in those uh, refineries across the globe are Nigerians. You'd be shocked. So uh, we have the capacity to run our refinery. It has been done before. We had refineries in the, in the past. We had the worry. We have the Katana. So, and it worked. So if it worked, then why won't it work? What I just believe is that we just have to have the to we have the right set of people to do the job and also have the right mindset. Then the issue is also making sure that those that are ready to, to be able to supervise, to pretend on these refineries are also um, transparent enough, not corrupt. Um, the, we also have to change the mindset of most of the people at NNPC who believe that the best way to go about this is the of wealth. When we change that mindset, I believe that we can be able to refine our crew, just like every other country. Because when you just talk about refinery, refinery is not just about petrol. People just talk about refinery, people just believe it's just only about uh, petrol. It's not just about petrol. Mm -hmm. Diesel, yeah, there's diesel. There are also the other byproducts of 
um, they, of, uh, of, of crude, like aviation fuel. So it's not just about petrol. There's crude, there, there's petroleum, there's aviation fuel, there's diesel. There is other byproducts that are used for other things, like that are used for, you know, gelling, like uh, motor oil, so many things that are important that we can be able to, so it can, it will reduce our importation and also be able to self guide our foreign exchange. So we don't spend all we have, uh, what we make in our foreign exchange uh, by using it to buy petrol. So that is why we said that there's, people have always said that the government have no business in this. And they say, no, government have business in business. Aramco, the biggest uh, oil, uh, the petroleum company in, in uh, Saudi Arabia is owned by the government. The government owns close to about 90% of um, uh, Aramco. Uh, and that's, if you see how much that company makes every year, that is num one of their number one products. That is their export. And they have a technology. They have a technology that, that, that enables them. You know, seen, I've seen their, their, I think you've seen their, their, their workstation where they can of tell course, you I where did, uh... each pipe is passing through and rest of them. So that is what we need. In these days, uh, what we need is technology. To, technology, this a, 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 an annoying industry that is uh, technology driven. I will get it right. We can be able to do it. If you can get, look at it from this point, uh, we have Google Map. Wherever, if you are going somewhere, all you just need to just put you the address on your Google Map. And you see the map that, and you continue to direct you. That is how far the, you continue to hear that woman. I'm sure you're used to that woman's voice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> go left, go left. <laughs> They can even take you to your remote village, your village, <laughs> that woman. So that is the power of technology. Mm -hmm. So it's not something, it's not skyrocketed that we cannot be, we have the manpower, we have the people to do. But what we don't have is the political will because of corruption and other vices that Nigerians are just getting. So I don't agree with the president. Then to the other one by the, uh, by Sanusi. Sanusi, yeah. something, I mean, there's something Jame that Sanusi said, if you, if you read his speech, and he said, somebody, who had practically had no couple, but became a, a member of um, uh, um, of uh, Buhari's cabinet. He's not flying a private jet mm -hmm. as a private jet. That is Jamie, and that shows you the level of corruption within the Buhari's government. And uh, well, that was why I was laughing over my uh, the reply of Garbashe to the um, statement issued and the interview. Um, granted uh, by former AGF, Adoki, where you're saying, oh, Buhari came to form Nigeria, he put corruption to a standstill. And how does that garbage? Because we know, personally, I still repeat that Buhari has been the worst president we've had since 1999. I stand to be corrected, but that's my personal opinion. Because this is a man that came with so much hope, but he couldn't deliver. Mm. So, um, coming to say, so, but I'm not the one who leads one saying, even the current government have said that they inherited so much problem in terms of economic crisis from Buhari, uh, Buhari's government. The NSA said it. Remember, he said it. Some other um, government officials of this current government officials have also said it. So, so what legacy will you say that Buhari never was? But that is what it is. And which is why some people believe that this current government, if they have the will and the political will, should look, to look into the books of the Buhari's government that so much will be on it. If another government, another party uh, took over government from Buhari, what we're doing now is not what we'll be doing. But because it's the same APC, APC, they have a way of covering themselves. Another party would have gone into the books to look at some of the things that the level of corruption on that uh, the Buhari would have been worse than what we could think that happened in Jonathan's But that is how it goes. So what, whatever Sanity said, or have been saying it's not in the two hours, which is just a part. All right, let's move to the nation newspaper. And it leads with federal government, TUC, strike over subsidy pains not needed now. You have the writers there, NLC pushes ahead, Sean's meeting with the minister, wage award plan ready in two weeks, uh, presidency cautions against mixing of labor matters with politics. And then you have above the masthead, tolling of federal highways to go on, says Umahi. Owando acquires NAOC's upstream oil assets. Uh, you have Son Olu drops five in new nominees list to assembly and more insights into Tunubu's 100 days in office. So um, 
Someone who drops five new nominees list to assembly. Chris, what yes, do we know about uh, this? Yes, the, the, you know, there was a meeting between the PAC, which is the political, uh, what would I call it, engine room of the peace in Lagos, and um, uh, Dr. Wodo, as well as the uh, speaker of ASA a few days ago, we had to resolve some of the issues, gray areas, and that was uh, raised by the House of Assembly on the issues of, um, issue of uh, the commissioner nominees, the uh, nominees of and um, after that meeting, I think that probably I that so, someone had to drop uh, five of the nominees and get five more, probably to assuage uh, the demands of the House of Assembly. But the key people, uh, some of the key people that were dropped, I think, are on stage. One is Akinya uh, Biomic, uh, so Akinya Biomic, former Commissioner of Health, I think it's, it's still in that list, Gringo uh, Motor Show. For my information commission is still in that list and some other ones so but so they've come to a compromise and then um, to be smooth sailing um the, the committee uh, headed by the i think the majority leader of the house is in charge of the screening and i believe that next few days they will screen and the commissioners will as usual be called to the house of assembly to answer certain questions and take a part and i think that issue is um, resolved and uh, because it's ready to and, um, and that is what it is. So in the next few days, we are going to see that uh, these commissioners, um, with many commissioners, as they are, uh, are going to be screened and they are approved. And the governor will not sweat them. So they start their job. That of the commissioner, the Guaha, about the commissioners, that settled. Yeah. And so you have uh, more insight into Tinubu's 100 days in office. You know, when I saw that, it, it just hit me 100 days already, and it just seemed like yesterday when we were talking about the inauguration in Abuja. 100 days. Once they, once they take off, once they take off they, they've taken off, and that's it, the counting days. It's just uh, like a, a new baby. In my place, they say, just never born. Once you don't born, you can't don't, you can't don't begin work out, you don't begin, that's how that's, you know. So, um, 100 days, yes. It looks uh, that it's just like yesterday, but the mm -hmm. government is already uh, in, in real motion and they are moving. And um, except anything happens tomorrow, it, it, this government will continue to exist. Except that something happened. Even if there's any kind of uh, judgment tomorrow, that is not, uh, did not favor the president uh, alignment. You know, don't forget that they still have his days in court. This case will get to the Supreme Court. Definitely. That is so, uh, the government is already uh, on the path to uh, really not uh, uh, some of its promises and also trying to consolidate. All right, so let's move to the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the Guardian newspaper leads with President's burden of resetting Nigeria in 100 days. You have the picture of the president there. I, I like the way the, the, the Guardian has captured this and um, they gave some talking points. Um, Fuel subsidy removal, foreign exchange liberalization, appointment of service chiefs, Amir arrest, uh, uh, arrest and prosecution, uh, EFCC bust removal, students loan scheme, dissolution of MDA's boards, appointment of ministries, Niger crisis, rising inflation, high fuel crisis, uh, prices, bloated cabinet, strike, in living costs, worsening FX crisis, rising poverty, shrinking household incomes. So the Guardian broke it down for us and gave us a summary of what these 100 days have been like. All right, so bold reforms leave Nigerians more miserable amid assurances. Uh, that is uh, the big story on the Guardian newspaper. And so you have Gabon coup leader General Ngama sworn in as interim president. Apprehension as labor begins warning strike, court rules on presidential election. Uh, Chris, you want to talk about Gabon? Yes, General Gabon. Um, yes, the, the new military leader who is causing to our state, the leader Ali um, was sworn in as a um, military head of state. Um, by doing his speech, he didn't tell into the world what it's going to do about transition of power to this to civilians which is always the, <laughs> the way uh, the military's role in africa they tell you oh, they've come to correct certain ills uh, 
But you come to realize that after some time that they won't be able to do that, they want to consolidate. Uh, with the inauguration of the military head of state, yes, that brings up a profile military head of state within the uh, West Africa and um, Central African region. Past few months, We're talking of um, Gabon, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea Conakry, and um, the, the question in everybody's mind and lives now: what, which, which other country, which, the, which is the next country, and uh, which is why we have always uh, asked African leaders to make sure that they deliver on their promises and stop making. Yes, nobody is asking for coup. Uh, coup military, military administration is out of fashion. The way to go is democracy. But act yourself. Have African leaders been playing democracy the way it, it, it ought to be? Democracy has been defined even in primary school, uh, primary school and secondary school, government of people by the people and for the people. But you ask yourself, most of this government in Africa, is it for the people? Is it by the people? Is it by the choice of the people? There is a situation where you see somebody, a family ruling a country for almost 55 years, and a president trying to change change the constitution just to sue himself and sue his capital. Supposed to go on two terms, change the constitution to, uh, to for another uh, third term. Even when it's obvious that he lost election, he also wants to retain um, uh, power. There yeah, you see what happened in Cameroon, Central African Republic, and so many other countries in Africa where presidents have, presidents have transformed from being president to monarch, monarch. Mm -hmm. and that is the issue. Mm -hmm. Then when the, the coup happened, some of them quickly started changing their military leaders uh, or their service chiefs and the rest of them. I said that is the solution to it. When the time is up, they'll be someone like Pobia, who is over 90, still want to go for another term. Probably wants to be president, president for life, mm -hmm. 100. Then how do you be able to justify that? So, but in Gabon, uh, it, what happened in Gabon is a bit different from that of Niger Republic. The difference is that that of Gabon, everybody could see that there was a total uh, alienation of the wheels of the people of uh, Gabon. That of Niger is a bit tricky in that um, the coup leaders are finding difficult to, to convince uh, um, Nigerians why they why they engage in that in, in that coup, and that is what they are still finding. But in Niger, also you know, just realize that just yesterday, the uh, ban placed on. Uh, on the space of Niger has been lifted, lifted. So that means light can now go into Niger and also come out of Niger and also pass through Niger to other parts of the world. Yeah, isn't it interesting that AU and um, ECOWAS appears to have been more reactionary than not anything else? I mean, they wait till the military boys strike and then they begin to talk and begin to make moves and all of that. But when these so-called democratic leaders perpetrate themselves in office, uh, tinker with the constitution and commit all sorts of things against the people, they do not do anything. You know, as you say in local press, when you're on the table, when you eat, and then we don't talk, shouldn't talk. And that is what is happening. So all of them, are not same on the same. They are same on the same. So I, when you say you, you talk, who are the people in the EU? You're talking about head of state of African Union, of the African Union, head of state of ECOWAS, head of state of say, the, the South Africa and that of um, Central Africa. Central African Republic, for example, uh, uh, in one of the countries, the president is about changing the constitution again so that he can remain in office. You saw what happened in Zimbabwe, uh, in Zimbabwe a few days ago mm. during the election. That was practically rigged by, and this was also somebody that, um, when he when he won the election, Zimbabwe uh, took part to celebrate him because of the atrocities caused by former President Mugabe, and they thought they've gotten a leader, and they, that is a new dawn. But the one that is taking over from uh, Mugabe is getting worse than, Mugabe. and you can see the opposition have been stifling, some have been chased out of the country. So that is African leaders for you. So they will never speak against their own. And when it happens, they just come out with the water and say, oh, no, military is not the military is that. The fact is that they have to, don't they have a mechanism, a way of talking to themselves? And another aspect of it, uh, before I get up, is that the willing power, the willing power of French, the French government in Africa is dwindling by the day. It is dwindling by the day because if you look at the coup, that happened, the four coups that happened in West Africa, those are uh, French-speaking countries. You have to, for example, 
first uh, uh, for uh, West African French people, even that of Gabon is French too. Would, for example, if it's not the problem, that was a coup against the father of Ali Bongo. That was a coup, and after that coup, the the French government, the French military came into Gabon and also reinstalled him and um, most of those that participated that thing. Right? But now you can see that they also felt that thing. Their time is up in Africa. So it's a new dawn in Africa. And the, what we are seeing is what I would call the uh, French. Uh, what you, you know, we used to have the Arab Spring. Probably what is going on is the French Spring in, in Africa. And most of, of these Africans want to just remove themselves and detach themselves from the court of the French. And the question I keep asking is, are we listening? Are we um, listening to what's happening? I mean, look at Kigami has sacked, uh, we, I mean, you're aware he sacked over 200 or about 200 of the military chiefs in his country. One would think that, you know, these ones in power, these democratic leaders in power, would, if anything, adjust, you know, if they were doing anything wrong, if they were in, they would sit up and, you know, use their tongue to count their teeth, as our people would say. But what they seem to be doing is making sure that they remove whoever may appear to be a potential threat. Yes, there are two, there are two um, edge to that one. Particularly, let's talk about um, Rwanda. Um, yes, in as much as Kigami is the same put and trying to, I think it's there for about 23 years now, whatever. But you cannot compare what is happening in Rwanda with other African countries. The level of development in Rwanda is awesome, whether you like it or not. There have been a lot of improvements. It's just not, I still don't believe that only one person can get it done. But when you look at the level of the, like, don't, if you look at the development level of the, if you've been to uh, Kigali of recent, you'll be shocked. You think that you're in a European country. Yeah, but, but this was a country that some years back, you had that massive um, genocide and killings and rest of them. But they were able to, he was able to turn it around. But the fact is that he cannot be the only one to do it. Thank you. What does the constitution do say? Hey, that is constitutional. Whether you are the best or not the best, of course, um, Barack Obama is, uh, was one of the best uh, presidents uh, the U.S. had. But despite all that, uh, how good he was, after eight years, he had to leave. Mm -hmm. So that is what we're talking about. So it's constitutional development. It's not about how good or you are, what you're able to achieve. You, you know, the, the local but we used to say class five, now turn by turn. So when you finish class five, you go come out, another, mm -hmm. another person will enter. So I would say seniority is not forever. Those are the, our words in those days in secondary school. But <laughs> the fact remains that if it's a, that is a constitutional thing, if it, you are given certain terms, once you are done with that term, just leave and let another. Give, put a, 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 a well-organized election system in place so that the people's mandate will count. Let them elect who their leaders are. And whoever they let should be able to be able to deliver. So for you to remain there and just be constrained with constitution, just because of how you think that you have delivered, it's not that you have not there for me. So um, I think it's the one time to some of them. If they lie, let them dismiss all the generals in the army. Most of the time, you, you, know, you have to realize that those that plan key most of these uh, countries on this, in these countries are not even generals. They are just those within the captain and major ranks. And that is what has been happening in other parts of Africa. The, the junior ones plan the coup, execute it, and just get one general to head to be an interim leader. Mm -hmm. And that's what has been happening. Yeah, another term we used to have or use in secondary school was senior pangolo. It does appear yes. we've had a lot of senior pangolos who are not doing anything and don't want to leave. They have to leave. They just have to leave, whether they like it or not. They have. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Chris Kendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, has joined us in Lagos State on Off the Press. You're still watching of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It is the Tuesday edition. And it's time for us to take a break and come with our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>